KD is back, but he got hurt again on that leg. We're going to speak on how long we think KD can last for his career on that leg. And then we got to speak about Dub Nation and Steph Curry. Is he the greatest point guard of all time? I start off by saying, I think so. <laughs> and sure. then, what's the last topic you want to touch on, Raw? Well, I do want to give out our awards for this right. year. You know end of the year awards. Right. End of the year awards. I can take that. Defensive Welcome player back. of the year, MVP, you know what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. MVP, defensive player of the year, six man of the year. Welcome back to Madness of Sports, NBA edition. <laughs> What up, squad? Mizzy World Entertainment is back to present another episode of Mad Mizzy Sports NBA Edition featuring my co-host, Raw Dog. And today we're going to be speaking on how long can KD last on that bum leg even though he's back? Not to say bum leg, but how long can KD last on that leg for his career moving forward? Um, is Steph Curry the greatest point guard to ever play the game? And then, you know, Raw and I got to give out our end of the year awards. MVP. Defensive Player of the Year, and Sixth Man of the Year. So to start it off, Raw, KD is back, but he got hurt as soon as he came back on that leg again. He's been hurt on that leg multiple times since he's, like, been going through that that tough injury stretch. Yeah. How long do you see him going? Do you see him ending the, his career strong like a, a, a LeBron James, or do you see him kind of hobbling out almost like a Tracy McGrady? <sighs> I want to hope that he could finish off like a, like a LeBron James. I just don't see. I will hope that he would get the rest that he needs. I mean, because I mean, now something is still not right. Where it can be. Um, I know that that's a real tough injury. It's, it's never. I mean, everybody knows that's like a real tough injury to get over. You know, and some mm-hmm. people never recover from it. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's a thing of you rushing back too fast to play. I mean, obviously, it's the year off, right? I mean, mm-hmm. like, so it's like I, I don't right. I don't know what the issue is, but I know that if it keep going the way it's going, like you really going to get to the point where. You could you you would first of all KD would never be a journeyman. Mm-hmm. But it's like, are you going to shorten your career with making the decision to rush back mm-hmm. all the time? Right. Or is his career going to be I shortened into in being maybe he can't play 30, 35, 40 minutes a game anymore? Minute short, and then now you're you got to be a six man just because you can't play starter minutes. Or could he st- could he handle mentally being a six man? Like I know? don't I don't think so. Exactly. Um, I don't think so. When you used to be in the main, you used to be in the fucking man. You of know course, what I'm of course. Look at how AI was. He was fucking. He didn't want the bitch. I mean, exactly. That was AI's problem. He could have prolonged his career. Maybe, possibly, got a ring had he been able to humble himself. Humble himself. Yeah. Swallow. Take a slice of humble pie. And, you know what and I'm we saying? love AI. You know what I'm saying, like, don't get it twisted. Of course, but uh, that was definitely something that hindered him. Is that once he wasn't able to be a starter, he didn't see that, and he didn't see that he could still be a great like bench player, a great. Veteran, he you was still he was holding it. dudes back. Like I remember, he was in Detroit fighting. Uh, who was out there starting over him? He was just hating on him. I'm like, come on, AI. Yeah, like that's that's what we're not going to do. You feel what I'm you saying? I don't want KD to be that because at that point, your legacy had already been solidified. He was already AI. You know I'm saying, mm-hmm. like, motherfuckers gonna love you regardless. Mm-hmm. They ain't gonna love you no less because you come off the bench, right? So you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like, but it's gonna it's gonna be a damper on your career when you go to those different cities and you don't. You're not AI. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because when you go there and you're not starting, but now you're pouting on the bench, Detroit didn't get to see AI. You right. feel what I'm saying? Where else was he? Where else did he go back? Where Memphis. Else did he, yeah, Memphis didn't get to see AI. When he came back to Philly, we got to see AI because they started. They said, all right, we'll give you the keys for a couple games. Yeah. And you'll burn out real quick. You feel what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, man, um, that was uh, – I, I hope he can get right. But for me, I don't see it And then well. I mean, like Raw said – if you already took a year off and you come back, now you have a more leg injuries. You took time off, you come back, you have another leg injury. Right. I mean, he's not healing right. Something is going on with that leg, and we know he's been in the league for quite some time now already. So it's not like it's just coming out of nowhere. Maybe it's just the wear and tear, and maybe those injuries are catching up finally, or it, he he can't recover from that type of injury. Maybe like somebody else could, just because of his length. You feel right. what I'm saying? How much his Achilles really. Like, his Achilles carries so much just because of his length. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he's a long dude, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. But uh, let's move into this next segment. And I want to speak on this segment with Raw for one big reason, just because 
He's a little bit older than me. You've been watching and understanding basketball probably for what a good eight more years than me, maybe a little bit longer. But uh, it's Stephen Curry, 30 clip, the baby face assassin. The best point guard in the history of the game. I feel like, yeah. I mean, the stuff he's able to do, we, you've never seen before. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, the stuff he's able to do, you've never seen before. Everything is at will. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is at will. It, it seems I, like. It, like it, he makes this shit look so fucking easy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, am Shooting I, from 35 feet. Like it's, like, it's, like it's a normal layup. This right. is what he do, and it's effortless. And that's not, and, and that's not easy, people. The confidence alone puts him up there. But then they had a comment to shoot the shit, and it goes in. And it's not just the shooting. The way he's able to move around the court. Right. The, you know the endurance. Saying? The endurance. And, and the, the thing that you came in nowhere near the top of the, I mean, I'm saying the top right. of the shit. Like, yep. Yep. That's amazing. You came into the draft, and Blake Griffin was the runaway. Pick him number one overall. Get him, get him. Nobody argued that. I remember watching stuff in college, and it was just like, oh, his his shooting was was amazing. Me and Lack used to watch him and just be like, yo, the net isn't moving when he's making these shots. Right. How is that possible? Right. You feel what I'm saying? But nobody's seen this. And to me, yes, he is the best point guard to do it because for me, what separates him and to, the other, the only other point guard to me that is a discussion with, and that is Urban Magic Johnson, is the simple fact of the era that he's doing it in. Yeah. Every last one of his runs. To the NBA Finals, he has had to go through James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Damian Lillard. You feel what I'm saying? Michael Conley, Pat Beverly. Like, names all over the place. Who? I mean, outside of Isaiah Thomas and, and, and Magic, I mean, I think Mo Cheeks was playing at that time too, but I don't remember it being the golden era for point guards at that time. You feel what I'm saying? So like GP, you know what I'm saying? Like that, I, and Gary Payton was just coming in right. at, at at like really um uh Magic's prime. So I really don't remember any like like the the competition level the way it is now to where you look across the 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 board and then you think about he played the uh the um the Cavs five times in the finals had to go up against Kyrie what three times? Yeah, three times in the finals. You feel what I'm saying? So. He he's had to face tough competition at his direct position every last turn, and he's come out on top nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten. If you think about, it, he's the best player for that team. So, yeah, man, for me, he's clearly the best point guard of all time. And if he gets another MVP and another ring, we start we start talking at uh that Mount Rushmore start talk. Talking Mount Rushmore, you have to. How could you not? You gotta start talking Mount Rushmore talk right then. You feel what I'm saying? But uh, lead, lead us into the final segment, bro, bro. The uh, the end of the season uh, awards. End of the season awards. Um, for me, when you go defensive player of the year. Mm-hmm. If I start defensive player of the year. I would give it to, it's, it's, it's for me, I know this guy has been out. I know, I know, um, and beat has been out. Mm-hmm. But he's up there. But I'm gonna say Gobert, man. You gonna say Gobert? I'm gonna say Gobert. I, I, I mean, I keep calling nigga Gobert, but Gobert, Gobert. whatever. It's, it's I mean, that, that's how I spoke. That's how I spoke. Um, I mean, I think he's from uh, France or something like that. He's French or something like that. But yeah, I I like Gobert, but I'm not gonna go and be. I gotta go with Ben. I gotta go with Ben Simmons, man. I like Ben Simmons' uh, versatility to defend one through five. The way he's been shutting down perimeter. The uh, offensive players this year and the difference in the perimeter defensive play that the Sixers have, mm. like when he's out, I got to give it to Ben Simmons, man. The dude is amazing. You feel what I'm saying? He made so many improvements. You know yeah. What I'm saying? Then, like, he made a lot of improvements, man. I, I got to give it to him. Mm-hmm. He made a lot of improvements, man. Yeah. To see what he went through as far as the fan heckling and all that shit from a couple of years ago, he's made the improvements. You know oh, what of man? course. Of course. He made the improvements. Because at the end of the day, we've seen Philly crumbles people's confidence right like i think markel folks if he went anywhere else would have flourished if he would have went straight to orlando and yeah. then stopped in philly he would have flourished yeah but philly yeah, bring crumbled, it, it, they crumbled that man's will, confidence if you are if you are sensitive or soft this is not the city for you to play yeah yeah man because it's going to have you saying well i mean i'm a millionaire right that's what the city had you doing yeah. i don't gotta go out there and yeah Y'all already paid me. You know what I'm saying? So, it's tough to play in this city, but 
Let's go into the sixth man of the year. For me, sixth man of the year has got to be Jordan Clarkson of the Utah Jazz. I know a lot of people are going different directions, yeah. but I just look at what the Jazz have done. I look at what Donovan Mitchell, what uh, Michael Conley have done. But I don't see them taking too much of a crazy leap. I see as their bench, the continuity, and Jordan Clarkson really coming into his own as that that scoring spark coming off the bench for the Utah Jazz. I like Montrose you know, I mean, World. I, mean, like I, I just, I, you know, when I watch him play, I, first of all, like he be out there yelling the confidence in the motherfucker. Like this yes. motherfucker be hype, bro. Yes. And I just, yes. I mean, I like what he brings to the team. I, um, I will hope that he win it. You know what I'm saying? I know it's like there's other people they, they might go with, but I feel like Montrose World is. is He's definitely my 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 um, pick. Montrez definitely has to be up there. Uh, you think about what he's been doing ever since Anthony Davis has been out, ever since LeBron James has been out. He's been one holding it down. But he's coming from uh, the Clippers where, who was that, Lou Will won back-to-back uh, six men of the year. So it could be Montrez this year to yeah. win back-to-back on two different teams. That would be crazy. Definitely. Two different teams in the same city. The Clippers and then the Lakers. That would be buck wild. That would be a story written. But uh, us. Go to the biggest one. Who's your MVP? Who's your NBA MVP? MVP so far. Man, I'm still going with my rhythm pick for me. So I, I still I still gotta stick with it. I mean, I, I mean I I mean I feel like this, bro. It changes sometimes, man. Mm-hmm. Who you going with? Bro, I mean I I, I wanna go with the no 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 he said it's hard. <laughs> it ain't that hard, man. They gonna give it to Jokic, bro. They they gonna give it to that big man down there in Denver, bro. Who who else can they give it to, bro? And B came back, but I don't think he came back and had the. He's had good games. Right. He still hasn't had the impact Jokic has. Every time he's had a good game, Jokic has has you a good game. You feel like game. it's pretty much in the back. Every time he has an average game, Jokic has a good game. Yeah, I think Jokic got it. He played every game this year. His numbers are off the charts. We talked about that. Without last him, thing, it's last, like last, last, last um, um, yeah. Last and I thought, and I thought Embiid had a chance once he came back to put his stamp on it. But I yeah. felt as though, Joe, I'm a Joker hasn't slowed down a bit, and Embiid didn't. I mean, you come back, you don't expect him to come right back into that MVP yeah. form, even though he came right back and dropped thirty. He's had thirty plus point games, but he's also shown that that he's been out for some time. He's had some twenty point games. He's had some lackadaisical games. You feel what I'm saying? While Joker has just been torching the league. You know what I'm saying? While we, we talked about stuff, Joker been on the same run. Been on the same run. Let's talk about this, though. Before we get out of here, are the Wizards going to make the playoffs? They was in the pits. Shout out to Westbrook, Bill, and the Wizards, man. He, I see he, y'all. He rarely, gets a, he, he rarely gets a shout out, but he deserves it. Facts. Um, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think they make it. Okay. I don't think they make it. I'm going to say, I don't know how far they out. I'm going to say they are, though. Okay. I'm going to say they uh, let us know what y'all think, man. Y'all know what it is. Make sure y'all follow my guy Raw on Instagram at uh, Raw810. It's going to be on the page, uh, tagged and everything on Facebook, Kendrick McGill. Follow my guy. Y'all know what it is. Let us know what y'all think of our top storylines. If y'all got some storylines y'all want us to speak on next episode, let us know. Like, comment, share. Gang.